Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's episode of Black Project Gaming. Get read in at blackprojectgaming.com. I'm Vince, returning as your host and handler for this evening's session. Tonight we continue our playthrough of Music from a Darkened Room, a scenario written for the Delta Green role-playing game by Dennis Detwiller. For more information on Delta Green, please visit delta-green.com. Joining me are Brett as OSI Special Agent Luke Kashani, Cami as Dr. Josephine McCarthy, Doug as Victor Mikhailov, Jack as Dr. Emily Mraz, and Sonia as Deputy U.S. Marshal Sarah Shakarvorty. Before we begin, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank Alex Bickle and Dennis Solberg for becoming our newest patrons. We can't thank you enough for your generous support. We're currently hovering at $25 toward our $120 goal, so whether you're a longtime listener or just discovering our playthroughs, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash blackprojectgaming. For as little as $1 a month, you can help support future projects and keep this endeavor of ours going strong. Now, on to the recap. In our last episode, a voice from Emily's past convinced her to lure Joe back to the Meadowbrook Green Box. The voice promised to unlock all the secrets of our universe to her, but only if she agreed to kill the other members of Working Group Jackdaw. Emily complied, bringing Joe back to the Meadowbrook store while attempting to convince Sarah and Victor to go into the house at 1206 Spooner Avenue. At Emily's insistence, Joe entered the storage unit and reassessed the coffin of Anton Ture, only to find Emily pointing her weapon at her. The two engaged in a violent struggle for survival as errant gunshots brought local law enforcement rushing to the scene. Both Emily and Joe were arrested and promptly jailed at the Meadowbrook Police Department, where Police Chief Michael Buffington tried to get to the bottom of whatever was happening in his once quiet town. Meanwhile, Lukash, Sarah, and Victor plotted their next move. Not knowing why Emily would suddenly try to kill one of their own, they decided to search her personal laptop. Victor easily accessed her files, and the trio found a strange manuscript containing what appeared to be phonetic reproductions of incomprehensible prayers. Convinced Emily was now a vector for the unnatural, the remaining members of Working Group Jackdaw concluded she needed to be dealt with. In the meantime, they decided to recontact local antiques dealer Elizabeth Tucker, who told them she'd tracked down an end table from the Wheeler estate. Lukash and Victor inspected the table and discovered it contained a bronze bowl and knife, and the diary of Isabel Wheeler herself. They brought the book back to their hotel and found it not only revealed the source of the unnatural incursion at 1206 Spooner Avenue, but depicted a ritual for cleansing it of whatever foul presence still lingered there. The cost? A piece of themselves and a single human life. And that is where we will begin tonight's session. Joe. Yes. As you were sitting in your in your cell, just passing the time however you can, thinking about what happened, thinking about everything that had transpired ever since you ended up becoming involved in this program and this group. Uh, suddenly you hear the sound of keys and the door to your cell opening and standing before you is Chief Huffington who says, Dr. McCarthy, you're free to go, ma'am. She kind of stares at him for a minute before answering, almost like she's not entirely sure if this is reality. She's still, it's a long night. Um, I am. You are. We've, uh, we've been through that storage unit backwards and forwards, and, uh, well, so far the forensic evidence seems to support your side of things. Is Dr. Mraz still in custody then? Oh yeah, she's not going anywhere. Good. Um, okay. Um, yeah. She'll stand up. I had some things with me at the scene. Can I pick those up, or...? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we'll return those to you at the front desk. Are you gonna need a ride back to your hotel? No, that's alright. I have someone I can call. Thank you, though. No, yeah, don't mention it. Sorry again for the keeping you in here so long. We just, uh, well, working with the I'm sure you understand we had to clear things up. Yeah, of course. Uh, do me a favor if, I mean, I'm sure I'll hear either way, but if she gets out either on her own or with help or through legal channels or not, can you have someone notify me? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and you can pretty much bet that if she does get out, there's going to be a restraining order in your favor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, here, come on. I'll take you to the desk. We'll get your things back. Uh, yeah, she gets her stuff. Yeah, and they uh, the officer manning the desk returns your belongings, and uh, yeah, you are 
released. All right, then she is going to call Sarah. Yeah, and when you step out, it is well after uh, early evening at this point. It's probably close to eight, nine o'clock. Okay. And uh, we'll uh, transition to uh, Sarah, Lukash, and Victor. Um, as you go over this journal and this ritual, I'm going to need some sanity rolls from you all. So the way this is going to work. So for those who read the journal, I need you to roll uh, sanity, please. And for those who studied the ritual as well. All right. So Lukash with a 86 out of 30. Sarah with a 91 out of 76 and Victor with a 37 out of 54. Very well done. Who's reading the journal? Uh, Lukash would be doing both. He is the, like the researcher of the group. Got it. I think Sarah would be doing the ritual. And uh, Victor, are you reading anything or are you just kind of looking over their shoulder? Oh, I mean, I think I would probably look over their shoulder. I would try to get... No, I mean, if they're doing, if they're each, you know, covering it, I, I don't know that Victor's going to sit down and read it in detail, but he'll look over their shoulders. Okay. So, Lukash, I'm going to need you to roll 1d6 twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, four Sandy loss total. Not bad. Uh, you lose four Sandy as you find yourself pouring over this the text of this journal describing these absolutely and incompre- almost incomprehensible turn of events um, with the crone and the sacrifices. Oh God. Just to like peek back the curtain a little bit. Uh, Lukash is two points away from his breaking point. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh yeah, pal. <laughs> yep. Living on that dangerous edge. Um, yeah. So you lose six four total as you go through this and you study the ritual and, and the fact that in order to conduct this, you would need to sacrifice a human being starts to set in. Um, Sarah, I need you to roll 1d6 and Victor, I need you to roll 1d6. Oh, good. Just one. <laughs> Sarah, you lose one, Sam. Okay. Oh, Victor, Victor you lose six. So you succeeded? Oh, wait. Do oh, I no. need to roll a d6 because I succeeded? If you succeeded, that's right. You succeeded with that, uh, what was that roll? 37 out of 54? 37 out of 54, yeah. Just lose one. Ooh, oh. that's much better. That's yeah. much better. Holy um, shit. Yeah. Not me. So you study this this ritual, and I did post the mechanics in our notes uh, channel on the server. So you can see there that um, there is going to be a willpower cost. And reading through this ritual, you see that not only does it necessitate the sacrifice of a, of a living human being, but it also necessitates the operator and those supporting them to give up a little piece of themselves as well to uh, the ritual to dispel th- the dark man. It's got to be conducted on ground previously consecrated to the dark man, so essentially the house at 1206 Spooner Avenue. You have to conduct a ritual human sacrifice using the bronze bowl and the knife hidden in the end table. Uh, a human sacrifice is going to cost 1d10 sand on a failure or one on a success from everyone present. Uh, being adapted to violence has no effect at all, and the one who actually kills the victim, it's an automatic failure for them, so they will lose 1d10 sanity. Oh, right. Yep. Uh, the operators must expend 10 willpower and 3 permanent power between them. Uh the lead operator also has to fail a sanity test to actually activate the ritual, but if that fails, if they succeed that sanity test, they're going to have to sacrifice another point permanently of power. Oh, boy. Yeah. Question. Sure. To activate the ritual, is that the same test as when you're killing the victim? Can you automatically fail and fail that sand test to when you kill the victim? It will be separate. Okay. Because it's two two different uh, sources of that sanity loss. The one is actually just killing the victim. Uh, the, the other is activating the ritual. Yeah, okay. Making sure that's clear. Yeah. And so it will take um, the uh, it will take an hour to activate the ritual itself. So it'll take some time. This is the ritual to dismiss. The ritual to summon is um, different. Does- 
doesn't cost any of this? Yep. So the uh, the uh, invocation, uh, the summoning of uh, the Dark Man, uh, it's essentially 200 hit points worth of animals must be sacrificed every year over a period of many years on the nights of the new moon, on, on nights of the new moon. Oh boy! So it is a much more in-depth, much more extensive ritual, and much more obviously time-consuming. Okay, so we don't need to uh, call uh, uh, the Dark Man to dismiss him. No, no. you do not. He's so. already called. He's already called, and that's gotcha. why, gotcha. based on based on the diary, um, that's essentially why everything is happening the way it is, is because the crone summoned the dark man and consecrated the, the house to him. So any questions on the journal or, or the ritual? And the dark man's a reason why Isabel got better. The crone is a reason Isabel got better, but then um, when push came to shove, eventually the, the, the dark man, this Nyarlat Hotep, presented himself to Isabel and essentially the price for her health was to sign her name in his book um and she refused and at that point the crone left her um the detello family left the remaining family members isabel got sick again and eventually died oh boy uh, as you're going through this sarah your phone starts to ring i take it and i answer it. sarah here it's me i i look at my phone and it's it's you it's you. Okay, I see your number's not blocked. Okay. Uh, they let me go. I'm picking up. I need to talk. All right, I'm on my way. Um, you're still at the station. Yep, I'll just be outside. All right. Bye. I hang up, and I'm going to um. So that was just that was Joe. She's out. No bail or anything. I'm gonna go pick her up. Okay. Um, you need company. Not for this. I'm not going anywhere near that am house. Okay. Um, I stay here. All right. Um, perhaps we should stick together. I'm not saying we need to be glued together. If we have to split up, we have to. But maybe we should stay together when we can. I mean, I'll be coming back with Joe. Then we'll all come back with you. Okay. I, I agree with Lucas. Crowded car, fine. Take the journals. This is some shit we are reading. Uh huh. It's it's some shit. Let's go get Joe. As all this is happening, Emily, uh, your lawyer arrives, and you and her are brought to a separate uh, interview room to have your first legal consult. So tell us about your tell us about your attorney, your legal counsel. Uh, her name is Sylvia Horowitz. Uh, she was my family's lawyer, is still my family's lawyer, but has been working with me primarily uh, just in uh, safeguarding not only my uh, reputation and my business, uh, but also my fiance's, who is Chicago PD. Um, she's She's got that Alice and Janney kind of vibe. Uh, doesn't take any shit from anybody. Just very straight from the hip. Um, strong woman, older Jewish woman. Um yeah, she's fabulous. Also wears pantsuits. Love it. So, uh, Miss Horowitz, um, essentially relates to you that, that based on what she knows so far of the charges you're facing, while nothing will be official until court the next day, uh, you're looking at a minimum at assault with a deadly weapon and uh, pos- uh, unlawful possession of weapons in the state of New Jersey, which are both pretty significant felonies. She fully estimates that bail is going to be Definitely in the six-digit range, uh, but uh, she assures you she's going to work on getting it bumped down as far as she can. Um, you know, well, she, you need to get it bumped down. That assault charge is bullshit. We understand that. That's what the trial is for, Doctor Moraz. The trial will be to argue the fact that it's bullshit. I mean, it's a tenuous charge at best. The forensic evidence, if there even is any, is going to be uh, minimal. It's. I'm not really worried about that. What I'm more worried about is this this weapons charge. We're not going to be able to make that go away. Well, we at least get the bail down. Uh, I'm not a flight risk. Um, my husband is PD. Just get me out of here. I'll certainly do what I can. We'll deal with, we'll deal with the, the weapons charge as it comes, but just get that assault charge dropped. Get me out of here as quickly as possible. I'll do my best. I mean, at the end of the day, it's... I don't pay for your best. I pay for even better than that, so do it. 
Well, uh, we'll see you in the morning. I'll be here bright and early so we can go over our, uh, how this is supposed to go. Thank you, Sylvia. Just sit tight, Emily. We'll, uh, we'll get this fixed, all right? Yes. And she'll take her leave. She just kind of sits there, head in, like, her chin in her fingers, just kind of pontificating on the night. How is Emily doing? Yeah, I mean, she's very much, she's very reserved at this point. She's, uh, she's not, she's not been reaching out. She obviously reached out to both Krantz and her fiance, neither of, I, oh, both of whom suggested she uh, reach out to Sylvia. She's not feeling very confident with Sylvia right now. Um, but, she, you know, she's never been in this situation before. Uh, you know, so she's, she's putting up a very brave front. Uh, and she's she's trying to figure out her next move. Uh, makes sense. Um, I will ask you to make a sand roll for me. You'd love to see it. Twelve out of twenty-five. Okay, great. Yeah, you lose uh, you lose one due to helplessness. Okay. Um, just you're, you're you find yourself being just absolutely, maybe not necessarily overwhelmed, but the severity of the situation is really setting in. Like even Sylvia kind of articulating that she may not be able to make this go away as quickly as you'd like and you're sitting in this cell with these bars and your freedom of movement is gone. You can still smell stale vomit from you know, whoever was in here last and it's just, you've never felt this helpless before and you do not fucking like it. Well, I've felt this helpless once before but well, this is a close second. Yeah, definitely a close second. Uh, and with that, we will pick up with Joe. As you're standing outside on the curb in front of the Meadowbrook Police Department, uh, you see the familiar rental car drive up with three figures inside. Yeah, she'll wait till they stop and then get inside. How do they all look? How, how are you all looking right now after all that? I I think Victor looks um, very depressed, very... Um, I mean, this is this is like eight in the evening, right? Probably closer to nine thirty ten at this point. Nine thirty ten. He looks very depressed. He looks um, very ragged. He 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 sees Joe come into the car. He says, "Joe, you want a drink?" Eventually, yeah. Not right now. Though. Okay. Ah, uh, this is shit. Basically. What the. Uh, what happened? What did? What the fuck did Emily do, Joe? She pulled a fucking gun on me. <sighs> what the fuck? So, <sighs> Joe, uh, this fucking house is crazy. Yeah, it makes people do things. Do you, do you think house did this? I don't know. I I honestly couldn't tell you. You Victor. you are nowhere near house. How does this happen, Victor? Are you forgetting? The journal? Emily is insane. I know. I don't know. I'm just looking for some kind of... You know what we found on her laptop. That might have been... The house might have just been the catalyst. She's trying to spread this stuff around. What the fucking shit? Okay, I need drink. You don't want... You go someplace else. That's fine. Drop me off. We shouldn't be alone, remember? Yeah, okay, fuck. Mm-hmm. Do you all want me to go in there and see if I can talk to her? No. To Emily? Yeah. I mean, last she knows, you, she thinks you're sweet on her, I think. She does. I mean, uh, you... I'm sure now is not visiting hours, but you're agent, yes? Yes, that does... Allow for some. Leeway. Maybe. I mean, it's worth a shot, no? Everything you say in there will be recorded, though, you realize. No, I don't realize it. Just maybe I can trip her up. Uh, keep her in there. Maybe. I mean, can they really do that? I thought this was America. They can't rec- I mean. She is uh, essentially under arrest. Is she? The, I assume. Or she's being arraigned for crime. I think I think they're well within their rights to record conversations, unless it's between her and her lawyer. 
Ah, okay, yes. I do not know how laws here work. In Russia, you know, they just take what they want. If you want, we can just, if and if you don't mind, Joe, we could wait out here for him when at least done. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to, go for it. She can't hurt me. Yeah, I thought so too. This situation is a little different, but I do see. Don't underestimate her. I won't. Don't worry. Uh, Lukash seems a little twitchy. He's kind of fiddling with his shirt collars and cuffs. Yeah, can I? What I'm just trying to figure out why he wants to talk to her. Can I do a yeah human? Yeah, we'll human. Cool. A uh, human ain't good. Oh nope, not good. Yeah, forty six out of twenty five. He is twitchy, but what that's about, you you can't even begin to guess. I mean, you all just did read a diary detailing that you'd have to kill somebody <laughs> to resolve this situation, so could be that. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like he needs a drink. Look, gosh, be careful. I will be. Don't worry. I will be out here, waiting. But Joe, if you... Well, if you need anything... Do you need anything? No, I'm fine. Alright. But yeah, we'll be out here waiting for Lukash. Okay, Lukash is going to enter the police office. So would it be would it be normal for uh, someone like Spawn well, not normal but like acceptable for someone like Lukash to be like, hey, I know you have someone who's awaiting arraignment. Um, I was working with them and I heard there was a really unusual situation. Uh, just so that I can kind of like report back to my superiors, is it okay if I have a conversation with them? Yeah, roll, uh, roll, persuade, or law, whichever is higher. It's definitely not going to be law. That's for sure. Um, Although, well, that is a fail. Yeah, with an eighty-five out of fifty, um, they they the the desk the desk are on duty kind of looks at you and says, uh, "Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's it's late. She'll be arraigned in the morning. Um, if if she makes bail, we can talk to her then. But for now, I'm afraid not." Okay, that's fair. Hey, if she makes bail, would you mind giving me a call? They yeah, got a you got a number. Lukash gives him his cell phone number and slides his card across the table. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll give you a ring. Thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You have a good night. You as well. Thank you. And Lukash will walk back at the door towards the rest. Didn't go over. Okay, yeah. Um, no. Maybe we stop and pick a bottle of bourbon on the way home. You look like you could use a drink, my friend. Yeah, I could use a couple. Okay. All right. Y'all heading back to the hotel? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I will say you're e- easily able to find a place to stop off and get some, get some liquor. Booze. Yeah. 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 And when we get back to the hotel, uh, I'll Victoria's- actually also stop by, um, if there's any decent, it's just like probably going to be like a grocery store and just get like a nice hot chocolate thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, Perfectly easy to find. Well, yeah. to Jack's typed point there, um, I was actually going to buy Joe a bottle of wine while I was picking up something. Nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we go back to the hotel. and When we go back to the hotel, whichever room we decide to go into, Victor's going to sweep it for, for bugs. Probably Sarah's again. Sure. Yeah, with with your skill, Victor, um, it does take you some time, but uh, you know all the typical hiding spots or stuff like that, at least the best ones, and where somebody probably would have tried to install them uh, in the amount of time that you were gone, and you don't find anything. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Yeah. I mean, I think we'll start to fill... So, um, we found shit, Joe. We found a lot of the cult bullshit. Or whatever it's called. Yeah, we cracked the case. It like takes her a minute to register what you guys are thinking. Like she looks at you for a minute and says, like, What the fuck are you talking about? Almost like she's completely forgotten about the house and like the case entirely. <laughs> mm. Um what what do you find? We're still doing that? We kind of have to at this point. We found a journal. <sighs> Isabel Wheeler's journal and it had everything 
basically. The house is consecrated to the dark man. And we need to dismiss it. There's a ritual in the book that requires you to sacrifice a human life in order to dismiss the curse or the consecration. To dismiss his presence. For fuck's sake. Yep. Joel, uh, this seems to be your hobby or, or something. Um, have you ever heard of Dark Man? That's a great question. Have I? Roll a cult. Okay. I have. It's a little bit. Yeah, with a 49 out of A2. Um, oh, ho. Oh. When they tell the true name of, of the Dark Man, uh, Nyarlat Hotep, you vaguely remember reading some material about. Uh, and a, a figure in Egyptian history called the Black Pharaoh, um, and, you know, who went by the name Nyarlathotep, and you know, vague legends and myths about this individual who who appeared in certain points in history with um, just either as a harbinger of of you know ill tidings or something, but. Uh, the myths all kind of intermingle after a certain point. Like you do remember, you know, back in the era of witchcraft in the 1600s in the U S you know, the dark man coming to, um, you know, witches and giving them power in exchange for writing their names in his book, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a little here and there, nothing. I'm sure to the extent that I would have knowledge beyond what you got in the journal, but, yeah, pretty much think think of every mythological um, story, legend, what what have you, uh, you know, especially from that Puritan era about the devil, and that's essentially oh, what, what, yeah. what the Darkman is. No god, oh great. <laughs> so, is there any way to? Uh, I mean, we we have book, we have ritual, but is there any way to to take precautions? Is there any way? Anything we can do to prevent him from breaking out, killing us all? Or, you know, protecting ourselves from too badly getting fucked up in this ritual? Yeah, I mean, in in Russia we have all sorts of stories about witches. I mean, who well, I don't know if they are true or not. You know, you can take uh, iron nails and nail through shadow of witch to say they cannot walk anymore, but does it actually work? Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I have, personally, I have no experience in this kind of fuckery. I don't. I've, the closest thing before Delta Green, I had ex- an experience with these sort of things was I didn't even, I don't even remember what I saw. Honestly, most people don't know anything real. Or true. I have never seen anything. I I've read the stories on internet, but nothing like this. Internet is notoriously unreliable sometimes. Yeah, you have to know where to look. I look in places most people don't. Yeah, but then you meet crackpots like crackpots like that doctor. Anyways, we have to decide which way we're going forward because we can't. What well, one? Our first priority actually is Emily because we can't let her be she has to be neutralized somehow personally I think um, we try to get her involved in ritual I don't know how you mean you want her to be the human sacrifice as part of their doing I mean I don't think she will volunteer but if we get her there at that time we see what happens you know she's she's dangerous in that house it's fueling her. We get her anywhere near that place. We are asking for someone else to get killed. Not her, someone else. That's if we get her there conscious. Who do we use then? If not her. So you guys are sold on going through with a human sacrifice, is what I'm hearing? That's the only way to complete the job, I think. I don't know what Clance has on you, but I don't think that I can just walk away from this. He got the same thing on me that he has on you, and you, and you, which is everything. Duh. It's not that you get, you decide I I can walk away from this or I can't. You just can't. They won't let you. 
He's been honeypotting you and treating you sweet for a while, but I will stop as soon as you try to walk away. Honeypot, this is good time. Exactly what he is doing. Fucking crats. We answered the question. We know what's going on in the house. We did our job. <laughs> no, we fucking didn't. The job isn't just to figure it out. The job is to solve it. Contain it. Neutralize it. Yeah. I might have agreed with you a week ago, but at this point, it's too fucking much for me. I don't know if you're hearing me or not, Joe. The thing I'm trying to tell you is you do not have a choice. We either ne- neutralize it this way or we find some other way, but we can't walk away. L- look, uh, Joe, do not take our word for it. If you wish to talk to Krantz, you know, I can set up a secure line. You can talk. I think I know what he will say, but give it a shot. Why not? No, I think I just need to sleep. That's fair. Take a shower. Rest. Take your time. The house is sitting there. And apparently so is Emily until tomorrow. To be clear, I'm not going anywhere near that fucking house. Regardless of what we choose. If that's what you want, we'll handle it. The job just needs to get done. You don't need to be the Yeah, Joe just kind of looked at them all. A little lost for words and uncertain. And she's going to go take a very long shower. Okay. Are the rest of you going your separate ways or... You want to get drunk, Victor? <laughs> I am well on my way, friend. Uh, sure. <laughs> you want to go out or stay? Doesn't make a difference to me. Ah, uh, people sitting around talking. It's just chuck, 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 chuck all the time. I I am fine here. Uh, Luke Cash will just kind of nod his head and take another shot of bourbon. All right. Sarah, what are, you, what are your plans? Um, hmm. She has no experience with any of the um, unnatural, nothing like that. So she has, to her, the ritual is basically the only way we can solve this for good. Um, yeah, and, and with your experiences over over there, overseas, right? What you saw was more of a, 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 a creature of, of flesh and blood as opposed to stuff like this, right? This this is, yeah. you know, these rituals and these spells and and this kind of activity is not something you've ever experienced before. Yeah. She's basically trying to wrap her mind and head around this, but she knows one thing has to be done. But Basically, she's thinking it'd be nice if we could kill two birds with one stone. And she's gonna basically make herself some hot chocolate. And then at probably an hour later, she's gonna knock on Joe's door and give her another the other one. I wish her a good night and then go to sleep. So I, I think Victor wants to do two things before he gets too drunk. Uh, one is to finish the, cleaning the any potentially contraband files off of Emily's computer. And by contraband, I mean, you know, unnatural. Uh, and return the computer to Emily's room. And two, he's going to take a good look around the parking lot and their surrounding area looking to see if there are any cops surveilling us. All right. The, the computer is easy enough. Um, you're able to delete the, the suspect files from there and, and probably a few more just for good measure uh, in case there's anything coded. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, you're able to get that returned to her room and then go ahead and just roll um, alertness for me. All righty. Alertness. Woo! A success. That's a two out of 27. Two out of 27. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, nobody that you can see in either the parking lot, any adjacent properties across the street, nothing. Hmm. Okay. I think when I come back to, you know, I will say to Lukash, I mean, we probably have like two Dixie cups from the uh, ho- hotel bathroom or something that we're yeah. drinking whiskey out of. And uh, Victor comes back and says, I don't, I don't fucking understand. Why? Right? Surely the cops would be watching us. I mean, come on. It's not a big department. Ah. Uh, okay. Fucking Hicktown. Whatever. They're suspicious, but that don't mean they're gonna spend the main power to just follow us around. We weren't even uh, there when the shooting started. <laughs> True. Okay. Well, here. Cheers. 
Um, Lokesh will take another shot of bourbon. He's been uh, periodically like flipping a, uh, flipping over his phone. So he's keeping his phone face down, but he keeps like flipping it up to check it uh, to make sure that he hasn't missed any calls from the police department. Okay. Uh, he, he definitely hasn't at this point. Cool. He's just keeping a very keen eye on it, but he is also being completely hammered. So eventually that'll beat her off. And I, I think as Victor uh, drinks, he will get more, a little more chatty than he normally is. But it's all, you know, just kind of, you know, bullshit. I, you know, talking about this guy he once knew and, you know, and, and stuff like that. It's it's nothing really of, of consequence or substance. Luke will basically barely respond. Just some grunts here and there. Maybe like a laugh at Victor's particularly funny but mostly he's just dead dead quiet yeah and i i think you know victor's not too far away from that the two of these guys are happy to drink in silence together (laughs) at least victor is yeah all right okay so do you all want to pick up with the next morning sure i mean did joe take the hot chocolate yeah eventually yeah she probably didn't drink it but she like took it in yeah that's fine as long as you took it all right so here's how we're going to play this out rather than going through the whole arraignment process um we're we're probably we're just going to do some rules oh would we be able to get there early enough to talk to emily before the arraignment or is it pretty early we won't be able to talk to emily all right they already said no didn't they you could give it another shot if you wanted to sure if that's a possibility then yeah sure yeah, it'll probably come down to another persuade roll, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so in that case, yeah, we'll just say uh, in the morning, uh, Emily, while you're meeting with Sylvia, uh, just going over the process, uh, tidying yourself up as much as you can. Um, Lukash, Victor, and Sarah and Joe, you wake up and do you head over? What do you do? Do you kind of hang out or do you head over? I would like to go right away. Yeah, earlier the better from Sarah's experience. So, do you want to... Should we all stick together, or does everyone need to go? It's up to you. Uh, I prefer to be the one that goes in to talk to her, because I don't think she's going to be suspicious of me yet, but... Yeah, um... First, I can tag along if you want. Yeah, we'll probably be at the station, or Victor and Joe, if you want, you can wait in the car. I'd like to observe, at the very least. You're going to come into the station, yeah sure that's not a good idea she probably doesn't trust into the station but not into her cell or whatever conference room they're taking you into i mean if that's what you want how how shit house did you get last night lukash yeah but as much as he always does okay good for so me like, so like so like very yeah uh, okay but he's he's like a he's like a uh, an old hand at handling a hangover at this point. He's a functional alcoholic. Yeah, he reeks and he's feeling weak and sick, but he is able to like do his thing. So, um, and this isn't for this isn't to be a dick, but when you do show up, if you do attempt another persuade roll, kind of like you did the last time, it will be at a at a negative twenty percent simply because the cop the cop is going to smell the booze. Sure. Okay, so so Sarah, you're going with Lukash. And we're all going in the same car. I was, Sarah was saying to Lukash if she could come into the station and observe the conversation, but not be in the same room as them. And Lukash, what was the, what was the decision on that? I mean, you can attempt to convince them of that if you want. You think it's going to be easier for us to convince them to allow me to talk to her and you to observe it unseen than it is for us to convince them to just let me talk to her. The more unusual we make this, the worse it is for it. Hmm. What do you want to find out from her? I want to find out what her, what she's doing. And not only find out, I don't think she's going to tell me much. But if I talk to her, I can maybe convince her that I'm on her side and that might give us a leg up in the times to come. And that's something that we have to do. If she trusts me, it's going to be a lot easier for us to get her into that house. All right. I'll go into the station with you, but I'm not, I won't ask to watch. Okay. Yeah, so you all head over, and uh, 
Lukash with that 17 out of 50, even even with the 20%, it would be 37 out of 50. So, um, yeah, they uh, they allow you to. Uh, well, first, uh, the, the the sergeant on duty, the death sergeant on duty, uh, asks if you've got your your firearm with you. Uh, no, I didn't bring it with me. I didn't think I need it. Is that is that true or no? Roll persuade. That is another success. Thirty-seven out of fifty. Yep. Uh, he nods and uh, he says, "All right, just uh, sit tight. I'll ask uh, I'll ask uh, Doctor Moraz if she's accepting any visitors right now." She may be still with her lawyer. Okay, you can tell her it's me. It's Lukash. Time to check on. All right. And uh, Emily, while you're meeting with Sylvia, uh, going over the, the the morning's proceedings. At one, at, sorry. At one point, I do want to ask Sylvia. I don't know if it, I don't know if it look orthodox or uh, suspicious. Uh, I do want to ch- I do want to chat with Joe Josephine. They're not gonna let that happen. All right, and that's Sylvia. Sylvia's like, yeah, they like. Not only are they not gonna let that happen, but I would every iota of legal advice I can offer would strongly advise against that. Fair enough. Uh, but eventually, a, a, a uniformed officer comes back and pokes his head in and says, uh, "Doctor Moraz, you've got a visitor here. Uh, Lukash wants to talk to you. Is he alone? Looks like it." Yes. Uh, I'll meet with him. Uh, Sylvia, would you join me? Yep, of course. Uh, who is this uh, Who is this guy? He's a colleague of mine. And Dr. McCarthy's. Okay, all right. Character witness, potentially. We'll see. All right. And uh, Luke Osher escorted back to one of the interview rooms that's been set aside for uh, Dr. Mraz and... Um, her attorney before they transport them over to the courthouse. But uh, as you're led into the room, you see uh, Dr. Mraz there with her attorney, Sylvia Horowitz. Hello, Luke. Agent Honey. Hello, Emily. Uh, and it's just me and Emily and her attorney in the room, right? The door has closed behind me. There's no officers in the room? Uh, correct, yep. Emily, go ahead and roll human for me. Okay. Should I do like a competing roll? to see if I can, like, keep myself calm, or... Yes. Yeah, with a 27 out of 75 for human, I guess either do a competing human roll or, or a straight charisma roll. Oh, oh, oh! Oh! That's a critical success. And it's higher than hers. Yeah. With a 44 out of 80. Lukash is... is he looks fine. This is the first time he's been calm in years. So he draws his gun and fires. Oh, holy shit. Knew it. So. Oh, that's a, that's a failure. Yeah, with an 86. Well, no. So because Emily was surprised, she didn't pick up on what was going on with her human roll. There's a 20% to that attack. Ooh. So that means it's 66 out of 70. Um, and it's an automatic critical hit. Ooh, Which means- holy shit. So roll damage and it'll be double. So that's six damage. That's six damage. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how's Emily? How was Emily? What's her hit point total at? She's at one right now. <gasps> She's Ooh. unconscious. She's Holy unconscious. Fuck. Lukash, you raise the weapon and for the first time in years, whether it's the booze from the night before or whatever, but your hands are steadier than they've ever been and. You get that front side up and you squeeze the trigger and the bullet finds its way close to Emily's head. And I mean, based on what you can tell, it may have hit her, but the bullet knocks her out of her chair and there's a splatter of blood and she falls to the ground. Um, and Sylvia, not knowing what else to do, uh, screams and uh, rushes you and charges you. Okay, uh, so she charges, which is her action for this one. She needs to cover the distance before she can take another action to tackle me, correct? No, because it, it's a small interview room, so there's not... Gotcha. So she can move three, up to three meters and still take an action, so... Cool, okay. Yeah, so with a 31 out of 40, um, Sylvia charges, and she kind of bear hugs you, 
Lukash or as best as she can uh, and is a screaming bloody murder at what has just transpired inside this room. And um, you hear the sound of boots uh, kind of just stomping down the hallway as what you assume are police officers sprinting down towards you. Um, okay. Sarah, Victor, and Joe, roll alertness for me, please. No. Sarah with a with a 92 out of 71, Victor with a 96 out of 27, uh, Joe with a 60 out of 24. You guys don't hear the gunshot inside the police station. Um, Probably for the best, not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lukash, I will give you another uh, another action before the police get in the room. So what do you do? Uh, what he would try to do is is fire, even if it was at a penalty. He would try and fire again at Emily. Um, he so, yeah, he would have been hurting this lady at all, um, her lawyer. Per the rules, a pen target can attempt escape once per turn, but nothing else. Uh, how many turns do I have before the police? This is it. Okay. Hmm. You can roll either a strength times five or an armed combat, whichever is better. I'll, I'll do unarmed. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. Easily, easily. You're, you're, she's, she's, she is small, and um, you're able to push her off of you, no problem. And she'll, she'll attempt again to, to at least strike out at you. Let's see what she gets. And that's a critical failure. So um, she slips and falls, and is completely prone at this point on the ground, uh, sobbing wildly. Um, what happens next? I'm rolling. Yeah, so uh, the first cop through the door sees you standing there with the gun in your hand and without even waiting, uh, brings a gun up and fires a shot into you for three damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, I take that damage and Luke Cash will fire another shot at me. Okay, go ahead and roll. That is another success. Ooh. Yeah, 49 out of 70. Go ahead and roll damage. Doesn't matter. I, I only had one left. Yeah. Yeah. You feel the the bullet impact your shoulder, Lukash, and um, you don't know if it's adrenaline or just purpose or sheer will. Uh, but you bring that gun up again, and you you put around through Emily's uh, left eye, and her skull and brain spatter out onto the wall and the floor beneath her. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, uh, but if I am, uh, Luke Hash will at that point drop the gun uh, and get down on his knees and put his hands behind his head. Yeah, no. Yeah, and I'll take an action to that. At this point, yeah, because you, 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 I would say with as quickly as everything is happening now, um, these two cops now are going to shoot at you. Yeah, totally, 100%, that makes sense. Ooh, both of them get it. Two cops uh, burst in the room now. Um, and with a 20 and a 23, let's see what they do. Fucking Christ. Yeah, so uh, one one hits you for seven. Um, the bullet punches in your gut and a, a, a follow-on shot um, just right above it, center mass with for one. So eight, eight total damage. How are you looking? Lukash is really hurt, uh, but he's still at five hit points. Okay, so at this point, he's going to drop his gun uh, I mean, like, as best as he can. He's obviously very wounded. Uh, drop his gun, get down on his knees, put his hands behind his head. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he's muttering something under his breath the, the whole time he's standing. Yeah, you're tackled and handcuffed, and the scene is absolute chaos. Uh, Luke, uh, Victor, Sarah, and Joe, go ahead and roll um, alertness for me again. Oh, boy. <laughs> now we roll. Yeah, v- Victor with a 6 out of 27, you hear gunshots. Do you hear that? Fuck. That's Sorry, not hear normal. What? Uh, f- I heard fucking gunshots. And you see a uniformed officers running into the building. What the? F- okay. Now we're going in. Joe stays in the car. I'm going in. I have armor on. Joe's like watching this very impassively. Like there's no emotion on her face. She's just watching the company. By the time this all has transpired, you all aren't getting into the building. There are uniformed officers at the, in the lobby who are uh, screaming you to get down, to show your hands. They don't know what's going on. Um, they've got their guns drawn. What do you do? Me? 
Yeah. Hands are up, backing away. Just going like, what the fuck's they're, going they're, on? They're telling you to get on the ground. You and Victor both. We just got out of the car. Yeah, Victor gets on, on the ground. Fuck. Yeah. Sarah will as well, though she's confused. You're both handcuffed. Mm-hmm. And Lukash, you are... Um, the police officers, the remaining police officers do a sweep of the building. They get, um, they pull you out of the room. They pull um, Sylvia out of the room. They sweep the building. And with that, we'll go ahead and take a break because I got to figure out what the fuck is going to happen next. <laughs> Holy shit. How long have you been planning that? that oh. oh, he's been planning it since, since the, the last session. <laughs> yeah, I the first thing I did was talk to <clears throat> Vince, and then the second thing I did was talk to Jack to make sure that it was okay. Nice. God, I love that. I love it so much. I legitimately have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do next. Like, I, I have no <laughs> fucking idea. Good luck, Dan. <laughs> um, I, I mean, honestly, I think we're going to jump right into home scenes. Um, yeah. How do we solve this? We can't. I don't we think can't. I think we, we can't. can't. There's no way now. No way, Cram. There's no way. Does hang out here any longer? <laughs> um. Spoiler alert: Krantz will no longer be around. Holy shit! Because he fucked up. <laughs> this is this is this is going to have some very some significant lasting impact. Damn, we did it, guys. <laughs> we broke him. Yeah. We got rid of Krantz. We got rid of Krantz. Ooh. You're gonna so- miss Krantz. I already have. I, I, already oh, no. have I, already, I already have his replacement in mind, and oh, fuck. you're gonna you're gonna miss Krantz. I don't know it. I was just getting to know him. I, get it. I mean, think think about this though. I mean, is is there a chance that the three of us could, uh, like get a, you know, I don't know, find somebody to to serve as a as a sacrifice for this and still carry this out or Joe would not help. At this point, Joe would not help. I will say that too. Like she's oh, booking a flight home. She's out of here. She's done. <laughs> okay. She's checked out mentally. Uh, there is uh, Doug, um, but for at this point, uh, we're essentially going to be going through the prosecution and getting fired roles because um, uh, you guys. First, you guys picked the wrong cover story. <laughs> so there's going to be fallout from that. Two, um, like if you guys are down there on a, a, an unlawful, unauthorized investigation into this federal agent who had a body stored in his storage container, your bosses are going to have questions as to why one, one, one individual tried to kill another and then another actually killed another person and what the fuck your involvement is in all of that. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Let's do 10 minutes. Does that sound good? Yeah. Sure. All right. Sounds good. All right. See you in a bit. The next few weeks pass by in a blur. It's hard for you all individually to process exactly what is happening and why and how and what it means for you and your careers and your lives outside of the program. It starts with interviews, nonstop interviews from the Meadowbrook Police Department, asking about what happened, asking about Lukash, asking about Emily, over and over and over again, the same series of questions repeated ad nauseum until even you're sick of hearing your own voice and your own canned responses. You're eventually released, but only after the suits have had their way with you because this investigation has gone federal. And one day you wake up after having been asked not to leave town and you are being interviewed by FBI agents this time. Plain, faceless FBI agents there to investigate the body in Donnelly's storage container to investigate what he was doing in town to begin with and of course to investigate what you all were doing there and why a special agent with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations murdered a psychiatrist in cold blood inside an interview room in the Meadowbrook Police Department. And of course, through all this, you know you have to maintain your cover. These guys aren't with the program. Of course they're not. They wouldn't be asking these questions in these scenario, in these environments they were. 
What are your cover stories? What do you tell them? And we'll start with Sarah. Okay, before before all this happened and we were released and we were told and we, I, we, we knew this was coming that people were going to ask us about questions, right? Ask us questions about where we got this stuff, where we're like, how we got involved in this shit. Yep. Okay, and our original one was somehow like um, they were going to... A fam- the, like the family who told us to investigate. Um, Sarah's going to actually say that she was told, she was called in on this job. She wasn't sure what family, she had never been in contact with them, but she was called as a favor as a bodyguard for Emily. Okay, as a bodyguard for what? Just because Emily was afraid for her life, it's why she carries a weapon, it's why she's she had been, um, because she'd been writing a book and she'd been paranoid about things happening. And, um... Are you saying a deputy United States Marshal is taking side employment as a private bodyguard? It's a favor. It's a one-time thing. Okay. It's a favor for an acquaintance. One she wasn't looking to do again. And then it spiraled out of control. And what did Emily say she was doing in town? What did she tell you? All she had said was like she was investigating this, investigating Donnelly for some reason, something about, um, something about like the suicide, in, investigating something. I wasn't getting paid for it. I wasn't being, I wasn't paying much attention, honestly. Okay. Is that all? Is, is that all you got? That's all I got for like that part of the story. Yes. Okay, Joe. What about you? Joe is essentially going to say, I did this. I convinced them to come with me. I'm a hobbyist with paranormal investigations. I noticed a trend with the house. And I'd heard of the recent death of Agent Donnelly because of my connections to the Bureau. I wanted to check it out and I convinced them to come with me. I lied however I had to to get them to come. I did not think it would turn out like this. I didn't know Lukash was unstable. I didn't know Emily was fucking unstable and was going to try to kill me. I was just, I overstepped. I wanted to know more about the house and this is where it got us. Okay. Lukash, you are um, promptly arraigned in federal court. There is no bail for you. And you know the only place you're going is a cell probably for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, he pleads guilty. For sure. Does he make any statements to law enforcement? Uh, when questioned, he, the, over and over again, he'll just say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm finally free. Okay. Victor, how do you handle your interrogation? The investigation? So Victor, um, not knowing what Sarah and um, well I, that's what i'm saying like we could have like tentatively talked about this no they would have kept you guys separated yeah they but I, joe, joe would not have told them that was her plan until uh, right yeah right. not knowing what sarah and joe said i think uh, what victor is going to say is something kind of in the middle just to say that um i t- I was, uh, I've always been interested in conspiracy theory and, uh, in, uh, stories of supernatural and, uh, you know, aliens, crazy shit on, on the internet. I, I made contact with the, these people through deep web and, uh, they told me they needed uh, my, Expertise in computers. Uh, they they called me here. I come. I think it will be fun. Why not? Uh, this is not fun. This is fucking shit. These people are killing each other. I am not. I am over my head here. I am just computer guy. Okay. Sarah, Joe, and Victor, I need you all to roll either persuade or bureaucracy mm, persuade come on come on uh, nope that's a complete fail that's my job 94 out of 41 for sarah 
81 out of 21 for Victor and 43 out of 50 for Joe. Victor and Sarah, you are promptly fired from your positions okay. with the United States Marshal Service and with the Navy, specifically Victor. Victor, is it the Navy? Victor works for the Navy? What? Well, Victor what? works as a contractor, uh, as a civilian contractor for for the Navy Spa Walk, which is uh, their a group of a industrial, military industrial complex in San Diego. Holy guacamole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need you all to, I need you two to roll sanity, please. Great. That's a success. You lose zero with a 30 out of 75. And Victor with an 81 out of 53, you lose one from helplessness. Now, I need you both to roll a charisma test for each of your bonds. And we can, you can do this all at once or whatever. Um, and if you fail, you lose 1d4 points from each bond. Will that include our teammates? And um, Emily's gone, so I'm just going to delete her from my list. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so I rolled. So I had Alia, then the SOG teammates, then Joe, then Victor, and I was doing it in that order. So I lost it with Victor. Got it. Yeah. So um, you rolled a four. You rolled a four out of 50, a 45 mm-hmm. out of 50, a 29 out of 50, and an 83 out of 50. So yeah. Uh, if that last one is for Victor, roll 1d4. Okay. Three. You lose three points from your bond with Victor. Okay. Uh, Victor, with a 60 out of 35, a 78 out of 35, a 62 out of 35, a 70 out of 35, and a, f- and a 4 out of 35, um, please roll 1d4 and subtract those from those uh, those bonds, except for that last one. All right, yeah, so the last one was Sarah. So, <laughs> gee, thanks, Sarah. What the fuck? She, Victor's she like, what the, what the fuck? I stood by, stood by you, and now this? Um, so I rolled, I f- uh, failed four out of five, right? Yeah, so just roll 1d4. To be fair, I didn't throw you under the bus. <laughs> Okay, so I lost one one with Mama. I lost uh, one from uh, Alexander because Mama won't let me. Or I lost two from Alexander because Mama won't let me talk to him anymore. I lost one from uh, the Black Russians. I lost one from Joe because she's freaked out, and I succeeded with with uh, Sarah. So. Yeah. I think we're still good, Sarah. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, we still have a score, so I'm okay-ish. Yeah. Shaky ground. Shaky ground. <laughs> Joe, you are you are suspended, and you're s- subject to disciplinary action. Um, you are run through the ringer. Uh, but at the end of all this, when all is said and done, you come out the other side with your, your job miraculously intact. Your status, not so much. Uh but you still have your employment with the FBI. Jeez, yeah. So, um, you all are sent on your separate ways, obviously. You leave Meadowbrook behind you. Victor, what goes on with you in, in the weeks after the investigation is wrapped up? So, I think um, Victor is even more paranoid than ever now. Um, he goes back home and gets fired from his job. And, uh, you know, everything's turned to shit. Um, probably, I mean, I, 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 I know what he'll do in his down as his downtime activity. If we still get those. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but, but in the meantime, I think Victor is going to having lost his job, his source of income and all that, uh, Victor is going to turn back to he's going to uh try and uh look up some old contacts of people who uh, he know who uh you know some of the people he knows who used to ran, run uh the credit card scams uh skimming credit card numbers and things like that okay um and he is going to you know try and get back in with the, that crowd to uh work with them in order to uh, make some money quickly so that he can, you know, uh, survive. Because, you know, without a job, I don't know they had a lot of savings or anything like that. Yeah. 
Go ahead and roll criminology. We'll see if it works out. Ooh, criminology is not probably not one of my good. Well, what about uh, SIGINT or computer science? What's your criminology plus your computer science? Uh, my criminology is ten percent. The like the flat. Okay. It, my my computer science is at eighty two. All right. With with those two combined, I'll say it, it takes some time to to get back into your old contacts. Um, you know, and and they do their. Are, now, are we going like with full blown Russian organized crime, or are we like what's your what's your plan? I think that's the crowd that uh, Victor, you know, was involved with. Uh, you know. Or, Russian organized crime that was operating in the United States doing uh, basically uh, credit card skimming. So, okay. you know, going to ATM machines and gas stations and any place where, you know, people dip a, a credit card or a, or a bank card in. So the, the higher ranking guys put you in touch with a local Armenian power outfit. Armenian power mm-hmm. is, a, is a low level street gang uh, made up as the name would suggest of, of, Armenian street gangsters, thugs, um, but they they typically kick up to uh, a wider Russian organized crime um, mm-hmm. hierarchy. So they put you in contact with them, and you start running credit card scams with them. Um, but yeah, we'll say you're able to get some money, get the, get yourself a cushion. Um, do you go out at night at, at all, or anything like that? Um, Victor's social life prior to joining this was uh, joining Delta Green was primarily organized around you know his MLG team and uh, the Black Russians and that sort of stuff and so now that that is really uh, he's at a one in a relationship with him you know which is yeah. basically he's still subscri- subscribed to some of their uh, you know discord groups and stuff like that but he doesn't even pay attention anymore I think he's he's left without any sort of social contact whatsoever. And yeah, I think he uh, he would go start going out to some place, you know, at night, some places just, you know, making an effort at human contact and probably failing miserably. Roll alertness for me. All right. That's a 50 out of 27. You don't register that something is wrong until you hear the van door slide open. And you look to your left, and there are three men dressed in black, their faces obscured by balaclavas. And the last thing you remember is the fist colliding with the side of your head and the rough feeling of metal handcuffs being slapped over your wrists behind your back and the hood being dragged over your head as you surrender to unconsciousness. Oh, what the... Oh, fuck. Joe, what do you do in the next couple weeks without getting into any of the home scene stuff but like what's what's her immediate actions after all this is said and done she would probably I mean knowing what type of thin ice she is on as far as her job in the bureau she is keeping as low profile as she can doing everything by the book being extremely careful like when she's done at work she goes home she doesn't leave home until she's going back to work you know, making sure every moment is accounted for. Just almost to the point of like paranoia. She wants to make sure that everything she does from this point onward is by the book and correct. What sort of what sort of like after hours activities is Joe up to, if any? Is she just kinda hanging out at home? Yeah, she's pretty much after work, you know, however late her work takes her, she goes home and then she's home until she has to go back to work. Like she's after almost being killed by someone that she worked with, she's like paranoid almost at this point. What What is Piper doing during this time? That's a great question. I would imagine their relationship is incredibly strained. Um, I don't think, I think she can tell that Joe is having trouble um, trusting people in general. And that's probably uh, drifting into her relationship with Piper, there's just like a suspicion there. And so I think there's absolutely some distance and Piper probably goes out just to get a break from (laughs) Joe and all of her nonsense, sure. So one of those nights, um, maybe you're sitting on the couch trying to lose yourself in some mindless television, something just to take your mind off of everything that's happened. Probably drinking more than you should be, let's be honest. You are still 
aware enough that you hear your front door open and you hear multiple footsteps on the hardwood floor. And when you look up, you see four men with rifles coming into your living room, dressed in black, their faces obscured by balaclavas, rushing towards you. What do you do? Oh, shit. Um, ooh, uh, They're screaming at you. Get the fuck on the ground. Get down. Show me your hands. Get down. Yeah, I'm just going to lean into what her mental state has been, and she is probably not reacting, not responding. Almost like this re- resignation to like, okay, this was going to happen. I'm ready for it to happen. Like, does what they say, but like is not having any sort of emotional response. Yeah. They put you in handcuffs, and they drag the hood over your head, and you feel something slide into a vein in your left arm. And soon, thankfully, unconsciousness comes. Sarah. Yep. What are you doing? So I just got fired. This is going to be fun. So basically, she's going job hunting, probably in private security, because that's the only place her, um, like her, (laughs) her, she'll be able to get a job at this point. She has a degree, but like, she's in the military her entire life and then in the government so she's probably going to reach out to her contacts ask if there's any positions open in any private security firms roll luck for me yeah that's 1d100 right yep and I'll give you a bonus with your military contacts eh bad so with not with minus 20 so it's a 47 out of 100 oh just barely you're able to get a job with uh, with a uh, with uh, Constellus, which is a private security company, and I will provide you the details on that company later. But you're able to get a okay. private security contracting gig. Okay, good. So that at least means she can keep her house and be stable, or like her apartment or something. Yep, exactly. I mean, she and she probably had a decent cushion because she's not she's not the kind of person to splurge on things. Yeah. What does she do in her off time? Um. So she, uh, other than going to work, which she's probably going to be like pulling night shifts or day shifts or however the shifts work, she'd probably be hanging around with the SOG teammates. She might actually be staying away from her family at this point. Okay. Distancing them with the, just distancing from them. Uh, I need you to roll alertness for me. Yep. Who? Yeah, the 27 out of 71. Um, one night coming back from a night out with your SOG teammates. Um, who still associate with you. You know, they, they think you got a bad rap. They, they don't agree with the decisions you made and they don't agree with what you did. And they're surprised, honestly, that you did it considering you were always kind of the voice of reason, right? They respect you enough not to ask questions um, and just be there for you. But unfortunately, one night coming back, you, you notice you're being followed. All right. By a van? With that, with that score, taking your time to clock them, you count one person in front of you, two people behind you, and three on the opposite side of the street. And it's at night, right? Yep. As a federal agent, I wouldn't have been able to... I, w- I had access to weaponry, but now I'm not. I'm a private citizen working in a security firm. What do I have access to? What state are you in? New York, right? Yeah. You ain't got shit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe like a baton. That's it. Even then, yeah, you yeah. don't. You really don't have anything. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um. Then I guess I'll just I'll wait for them. Like find a well lit spot and wait for them. Just being like, come on, I see you. The one that was in front of you stops and turns and waits for you to catch up with him. He has his hands in his pockets. Are we going to be civil about this? That's entirely up to you, Miss Shockervorty. You're going to come with us now. Fine. Not like I have a choice. You'll understand if we have to. I would prefer not to be drugged. We can do that. Remember how they did in Afghanistan? Hood, goggles. Yep. Yep. You're getting the treatment. But we'll keep the drugs away. Yep. And they do. They pull the hood over your head. They put the goggles, the blacked out goggles over your eyes, and they put the earmuffs over your ears, and you go. Mm-hmm. Now, I do want to say, so if, if this gets uncomfortable or difficult for anybody, because this is this is a simulated helplessness situation, right? 
with people getting kidnapped mm-hmm. and if there's if at any point in time you get ridiculously uncomfortable you feel like you don't want to continue with this with this gameplay whatever put a message in discord let me know we will stop and we will fast forward to the conclusion okay does that work for everybody mm-hmm. yeah yep that work yep okay but we'll start with you sarah since you went last um you end up in a warehouse and hours upon hours of car rides, but eventually that that hood is pulled up from over your face and you're in a dark, dank warehouse lit with those industrial t- style lights that you can get at any Home Depot or Lowe's. There's buckets of water on the floor. There's chairs. You look to your left and you see two other forms also hooded and it looks to be there unconscious. The hoods are eventually lifted up by one of those men in black who's wearing a bottle cloth over his face. And you see Victor and Joe. One of the men reaches down and slaps Victor roughly. Wake the fuck up! <laughs> oh, fuck. Joe, you're woken by a splash of water over your head and shoulders. Wake up! Yeah, she comes to still very much in, like hanging by a thread sort of mental state right now. <laughs> yeah, I need everybody to roll sanity. There it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> is she gonna, oh god, is she that close? Sarah's fine. Yeah, 28 out of 75 for Sarah, you lose uh, You lose one. Victor, 12 out of 52, you lose one. Joe, oh, oh. 3 out of 46, you lose one. All of you due to helplessness. I am at my breaking point. Are you really? I was one away, yep. Uh... How do you how do you how do you want to do this? I guess she freezes. Yeah, she's not going to respond to anything that they do to her at this point. She's checked completely out. Okay. Um. So, what was this helplessness? This? Helplessness. Yeah. Okay. Um. But eventually, you hear the scrape of a chair, and this woman. I think she should be showing up in your roll twenty. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, Viola Davis. Work. T- takes a seat in front of the three of you. She's five five, black hair, dressed in a tailored charcoal pantsuit, freshly dry cleaned from the look of it. Not a single hair or thread out of place. Cold brown eyes make you feel like every word and expression is being surgically dissected and analyzed. And she studies all three of you. What happened in Meadowbrook? Two teammates went batshit. Obviously. Mm hmm. I don't know why Lukash killed Emily. She was a vector, so she was going to be disposed of eventually. How is she a vector? We couldn't find anything on our laptop after Victor got his hands on it. Because we erased it. Victor, what did you find? Fucking <laughs> shit, you're not going to kill me, are you? Don't give me a reason to, and I won't. <clears throat> Listen... <laughs> Sarah had nothing to do with it. It was uh, Joe and, and Emily. All those people were fighting. Lukash. They were all fighting. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't Sarah's fault. The time for lies is over, Victor. Sarah. We are with the program. Not lying. We're with the program. I couldn't tell you exactly what we saw. It looked occult, like weird as shit. Like complete and utter gibberish, gibberish. We could not decipher it. We thought it was safer to just delete it and then deal with Emily. What did the text refer to? I have no idea. It was utter gibberish. What happened at the house? There's some weird shit. That place is fucking psycho. It's crazy. Consecrated to the dark man. The um, Narlotophotep, something like that. Narlotophotep or something like that. Da. Okay. It would require... We didn't get around to dealing with it because Lucas shot Emily. It would have required a human sacrifice to get rid of the consecration. Personally, I thought Lucas was a good guy. I don't know. How did you know that name? Because, um, I don't have the journal. Who had the journal? Probably Lucas. He was the one who was studying it the most. Yeah, on his inventory. Yeah. He had it on his person when he was arrested. Lucas had it. Had a journal. We found. We don't have access to it. And you allowed it to fall into the hands of local law enforcement? We allowed nothing. We had no choice. Look, she's telling you the truth. I, I don't know why everybody picks on Sarah. It was Emily. It was Lucas. Fucking 
Joe, and maybe me. We all fucked up. And that's why we're here. We're trying to figure out how badly you all fucked up. And from the looks of it, very badly. You allowed unnatural material to fall into the hands of local police. And the house is still undealt with. The house still represents a threat. And you allowed two of your teammates to kill each other. There's a lot of risk with letting you continue to operate. Wouldn't you say? Why what are we mean, here? And what do you mean by operate? Like, operate or operate? To continue to work on our behalf. Oh, fuck no. Victor, it's not going to be a choice. You either work for them or you get conveniently disappeared. You do have a choice to make. Whether you want to continue to live or whether you want my face to be the last one you see. You will not be dealing with Martin Krantz anymore. Fucking Krantz. She smiles for the first time. Krantz was the best friend you ever had. I'm not. Sarah's just silent at this point, stone face looking at. Oh, she hasn't given you her name yet. Yeah, that this lady in front of her. Victor is plainly not looking at her. He's looking at the floor. We'll give you all some time to think about things. She looks over to the agent behind her. Movement of the rooms. We'll take this up again in a couple hours. Give him time to think about it. And you all are segregated, brought into rooms that are really no bigger than a closet. You can't lie down. You can't sit. You're essentially forced to stand. These are tactics, I know, aren't they? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Joe, uh, roll sanity for me just to see if you recover. Yeah. No, I'm not. 59 out of 45. Yeah, she's broken. Um, and these, these circumstances aren't helping. Uh, but eventually you are actually brought out of your cell and you are looked after. You are given food, you're given water. Um, there's actually somebody there to talk to you. They give you some medication to try to bring you down from your whatever fugue state you're in. And this woman is sitting in front of you again when you finally regain some semblance of lucidity. Dr. McCarthy, how are you feeling? Better, I guess. Hard to say exactly. What happened in Meadowbrook? I don't... Emily got a call that she said was from Krantz, and then she tried to kill me. There was something about a journal, the dark man. Honestly, I'm having trouble recalling a lot of it from that point on. But Did you read the journal? No, they found it before. I was still in custody when they found it. I didn't look at it. Did you know Agent Honey had it on him when he went into the police station? No. That told him not to fucking... Did you know he intended on killing Dr. Mraz? I know they wanted to eventually. I didn't know it was going to be right at that fucking moment. Why were they going to kill Dr. Mraz, Dr. McCarthy? They wanted to use her as a human sacrifice in a ritual to end or destroy whatever was in the house. The house at 1206 Spooner Avenue. Yes. Do you know the source of the activity that was reported at the house? The Arlotep, I believe is the name. Did you read the journal, Dr. McCarthy? No, I did not. Dr. McCarthy, did you read the journal? No, I did not. I know the name search. I did not read the journal. Very good. Who read the journal? I don't I don't know exactly. I mean, I would assume the cop should be had it on him. I couldn't tell you who exactly had eyes on it. I who told you the name Nyarlathotep? I believe they mentioned the dark man, the dark one. And then I had heard of that association through my research that I've done independently. I made the connection. All right. Are Victor and Sarah threats? I'll be honest, I don't know. I would have told you Emily wasn't. Did you know that Emily was a vector? A what? Did you know that Emily had been exposed to the unnatural? Not the specifics. Of Did you know what she was keeping on her laptop? 
I've never seen her laptop. Has she ever mentioned what happened to her in Chicago? No. No, I'm, I'm not familiar with her history. Should I kill Sarah and Victor? Can I do a human to check on her real quick? You can certainly try. Yeah, I know it's got to be real tricky. <laughs> and I'm not good at it anyway. Yeah, the 28 out of 13. Um, she's unreadable. I don't know if I can give you that answer. You're going to have to work with them again, Dr. McCarthy. So think about that before you answer. You're not walking away. Neither are they. So you three are going to have to learn to be really friendly again. Or, I put bullets into the back of their heads, we scatter the ashes, and they're never heard from again. Are you going to be asking him the same question about me? Yes, I am. The old prisoner's dilemma. I would trust them enough to work with them again. I can't tell you. I appreciate your honesty and your candor, Dr. McCarthy. There will be a car waiting for you outside to take you home. All right. And true to our word, there is. And you are eventually, if you get in, taken back to your residence. Yeah, she gets in. Yeah, you're put on a plane, a private jet, and flown back. And one way or another, you end up getting back home. Jeez. How long was I gone? Can I tell? Um, By the time you're able to put it together, you were gone about four days. Yikes. Okay. All right. Sarah. Mm-hmm. You're dragged out of your cell and handcuffed again to one of those metal chairs. Mm-hmm. And put again in front of this woman. Mm-hmm. We'll just call her the case officer for now. Mm-hmm. What were you doing in Meadowbrook? Investigating Donnelly's death. The house. What did you find? That house does things to people. <laughs> does weird things to their minds. Each of us experience different things. Um, it can manipulate phone lines. Make you think other people are talking to you when they actually aren't. And it's just the house using a private block number. Um, it was consecrated to the dark man. Ugh. How long ago was it? I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry. Um, it's fine. Did you read the journal? I read the ritual, but not the journal itself. You read the ritual? Mm-hmm. What do you remember of the ritual? Um, you needed a bowl and a knife, which I think were left back in the hotel rooms. The bowl and knife were confiscated when they searched your hotel rooms. When we searched your hotel rooms. At least you have it. Anyways, you need to use that or something like those to sacrifice a human. And then you sacrifice some of yourself to dismiss the dark man. That's basically what I can tell you. That's it. There's some aspect of, um, is this, is it magic? I don't know. I, this is not what I'm, what I've dealt with before, but that's how you supposedly get rid of the consecration or whatever um, the crone did. And were you able to execute this ritual? No, didn't get a chance. Why did Lukash kill Dr. Mraz? Um, well, I, other than the fact that she was a vector, that she tried to kill Joe, but he wouldn't really care about that. Um, I don't know what he was saying. I don't know his exact motivations. Why did Dr. Mraz try to kill Dr. McCarthy? I would say the house had something to do with it. Did you know that Dr. Mraz was a vector? Not before we saw her laptop. What did you see on her laptop? It was, I literally could not tell you what the words were. They were pure gibberish. I could not understand them. Would you have killed Emily if you had had the chance? If I could do it discreetly, yes. Should I kill Victor and Joe? Neither of them are threats. Well, Victor, eh, he's a conspiracy theorist. It's not really, uh, he's mostly harmless on that front and then Vector fronts. Uh, Joe is more careful of a curiosity, but otherwise she doesn't mean harm to people. Are you willing to kill them if that changes? I won't like it, but I will ha do what I have to. Then we're going to get you home, Miss Shockervorty. And we'll ensure that your employment is sufficiently well-placed. 
so you can continue to be of service to the program. I won't be able to be as lethal as I was. Don't worry about that. As long as you provide me what I need, then we're good. Very good. Let's get you home. How has her demeanor changed throughout this entire conversation? It hasn't. All right. There's nothing I can get clean from her when she was like, we're going to get you home. Try to roll human. Try, try it. Oh, no. This is just a night to fail. Yeah, 91 out of 28. The, the, the concrete wall has more empathy than she does. It's not even empathy I'm looking for. I'm just looking for, like, what the fuck's up with her? Like, I guess she wants the job done, but, like, there's these are questions that, yeah, you have to ask, but, like, there was something in her, in those words that take me off, but I can't tell. Uh, one more thing, Ms. Shocker mm-hmm. you will not be dealing with Mr. Krantz anymore. I kind of guessed that. You can call me Pierce. Madam Pierce. Have a safe trip home. Be seeing you. And you are taken back home? Cars and planes and eventually one way or another, you find yourself back at your residence four days later. Yep. Victor. So when uh, they come to get Victor, I think Victor is curled up in the fetal position, not completely able to lay down, but like leaning in the corner, rocking back and forth and uh, crying a little bit. The uh, one of the balaclava wearing agents looks to the woman behind him, the case officer, and says, what do you want us to do with him? Drag him out. We'll give him some time. We'll medicate him if we have to. And they do. (laughs) They drag you out and sit you down in the chair, handcuff your hands behind your back. What happened in Meadowbrook? (laughs) Fucking it all went to shit. Fuck, you know that. You know what happened. Fucking Emily shot Joe. Lucas shot Emily. It all went to shit. What was the operation in Meadowbrook? <sighs> we we were supposed to find out what happened. We were supposed to find out what happened to that guy. We were supposed to find out about house, and the house was fucking haunted. Haunted by what? <sighs> Which something? Uh some guy. Um, he was. Nali Hotep. Where did you hear that name? I was looking over fucking Luca's shoulder. It was, it was journals I had. It, it's all fucking bullshit. Did you study the ritual? I I looked at pieces here and there. What was the ritual? We. We were supposed to kill somebody. And Did you do it? Uh, Did you know Emily was a vector? Emily, that fucking bitch, yes. Fuck her. Why didn't yes, you kill her? Emily was a fucking vector. She had crazy shit on her computer. I saw it. Were you going to kill her when you had the chance? Me? Yes. Fuck. I, I never killed anybody. Would you kill her knowing the threat that she presented to your fellow agents? What the f- I don't know. Maybe. I don't even have fucking gun. Oh, Victor, you don't need a gun to kill somebody. She's dead now. I'm glad she's dead. Fucking Emily. Are Joe and Sarah vectors? Sarah, no. No, she is fucking cool cop. Cucumber, you know? Like, Joe? I saw her talking to Emily. I don't know. Is she a threat? Uh, probably not. Would you kill her? What the fuck you asking me this for? I... <laughs> okay. Look, you want me to kill Joe? I want to know where your lines are, know. Victor. Should I kill Joe or should I kill Sarah? <gasps> I don't know. Joe, I guess. Wait, was that either or, or? That's whatever you want it to be, Victor. Should I kill both of them? 
don't know. Joe is... Joe... Uh, Joe... Joe... <laughs> Joy is okay, I guess. I mean, she is just scared. Like, who wouldn't be? I mean, fuck. You did not see what we saw. Are you scared, Victor? Me? I am a Russian. I I am tough, right? (laughs) Well, we'll see how tough you are when we let the Armenians know that you provided the entire network of their criminal operation to the FBI. Fuck no! Come on! What the f- what the- <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. What are you doing here? I want to know if I can trust you, Victor. Krantz is gone now, and I'm going to have to work with you. Fucking I want to know Krantz. that I can trust you. Did you not like Krantz, Mr. Mikhailov? He made promises that he was not willing to keep. Krantz is a fucking shithead. Well, there's only one promise I will make to you and to the others, Victor, and that's if either of you, any of you, present a threat to myself, to this program, or to the public, you will disappear. No. no. Look, please, I... I I am... I am useful. I can do things. Oh, I'm going to put you back to work, Victor. I just need to know that I can trust you. I'll be good boy. I know you will. And I'm very much looking forward to working with you. That is what Krantz said. He probably meant it more than I did. And that's why you won't be working with him anymore. He trusted you all too much. He gave you just enough rope for you to hang yourselves with. (laughs) He wasn't as professional as he liked to think he was. Believe me, there will be no such trust here. You will do your jobs and you will do them to my satisfaction. And that will be it. I think that's a fair arrangement, wouldn't you say, Victor? Doesn't matter what I say. You're finally learning. Get him out of here. No! Don't! What? I told you what you want to know. You're going home, Victor. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I think at this point, Victor has probably soiled himself. Again. We'll get you cleaned up. And we'll get you home safely. Just be ready when the call comes. i be ready. Like I have a choice. And one way or another, Victor, you find yourself back home in San Diego. Four days after you disappeared. Hmm. It is now November. What all do you want to do with your home scenes? We'll start with you, Sarah. We'll, take, we'll start up at the top of the list. I think she's going to go back to nature. She's going to try to recenter herself make like um take some yoga classes make sure she um go take some like hard hikes in the woods if she can like in the right in the um reserves nearby try to shore herself up for the storm that's gonna come because she knows it's coming okay um so go ahead and reduce one bond other than a delta green bond by one and then roll a sanity test She'll be doing it to her family because she hasn't been talking about it, talking about to them, talking to them much. So, okay. So, Alia, really, fuck you. Oh, seventy-five. Oh no, seventy-five out of seventy-four. Um, yeah. No matter what, you just can't clear your head enough to recenter yourself, to refocus yourself, especially after what you went through in that warehouse with this woman who called herself Pierce. Not gonna lie, she was just associating very hard then. No, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, but unfortunately, it's not enough for, for for Sarah. Yeah. Great. Nothing happens. Wonderful. Joe, what about you? Um, I think... So if she wanted to look into... Emily, not the house, but Emily specifically. Which one of those would that be? Would that still be stay on the case, or would that be something like personal motivation? What would that be? I would say that would be stay on the case. Okay, yeah. She wants to find out what the fuck Emily was. (laughs) Okay. Um, So go ahead and reduce one of your bonds by one. Okay. And I'm going to make a roll for you. Okay. Okay. Um... Jack, 
why don't you tell me what Joe is able to find on the open source about Emily and what happened in Chicago? Uh, how successful is her search? So I rolled a cult for, okay. for her, and she rolled a 47 out of Joe. What's your score? Oh, a cult is 82. So there you go. Okay. So that's pretty good, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so at first Joe is bas- able to find basic, uh, somewhat easy to find information. Uh, she knows that she, uh, was uh, a graduate of Loyola, Loyola University in Maryland, uh, graduated with honors, uh, though she had attempted to enter into Miskatonic University. Unfortunately, she was denied. Um, she comes from a pretty, uh, not necessarily prominent, but definitely very wealthy family from a suburb in Chicago. Uh, has a couple brothers, a sister, um, both of her parents are still together. Uh, her practice was pretty well known within uh, the community. She also find that she had at one point um, before Delta Green uh, a service that she'd offered through her practice that was geared towards uh, women in the community from a lower income bracket. Uh, so giving uh, resources to women who necessarily couldn't afford it. Um, you find out that uh, she was a part of a pretty, uh, what would have been well known had it not happened in a lower class black neighborhood. Uh, you find out that she had been the sole survivor of a cult suicide in the Church of the Star of Wisdom. Uh, they had been, uh, the church itself, you, you find some information on um and it's there was reports of the church dating back from the 20s uh on the east coast uh but recently had popped up in uh in chicago's hyde park neighborhood so you find out that uh the leader of the church uh father kazahel was wanted on several different criminal charges uh stemming from things like tax evasion um, uh, you find some articles on the Church of the Star Wisdom. It's a lot like the, um, it, it's very reminiscent of the Nation of Yahweh, uh, which was a religious organization that operated down in uh, Florida in the 70s and 80s um, that had built up a lot of community roots, but also had a lot of corruption within it. Uh, Father Kazahel was kind of like the Yahweh Ben Yahweh of that, that organization uh, and it was therefore wanted by uh, federal agents. It, there aren't many details about the actual ritual suicide. Um, the only things that you're able to find on it are that all 49 people died, would have been 50 had it not been for uh, Emily. Um, the reason she was there was because a patient uh, who was a part of that program that she had started, um, Tanisha Jenkins, she was also a member of this church and she had been seeing Emily as a patient for several months leading up to the it's the incident at the church itself and I think that's it uh Vince unless you want me to elaborate any no I think um, I think that's good that would pretty much probably be the only information that survived in in the open source and in the media so yeah okay there you go Joe with my experience like with Emily and my occult knowledge is there any sort of like not necessarily connections but anything I can draw from that it's kind of like oh I might know a little bit more to the darker side of this than what the media is reporting itself I'll let you roll unnatural for this Ooh, okay with an 11 out of 16 do you want me to tell her do you want to I'll, I'll let you tell her. Okay. So uh, as you're going over these articles about the story of wisdom, you realize through some of your folkloric research that the story of wisdom is a, another moniker for the dark man in several uh, different pieces of uh, storytelling and folklore throughout history. Ah, That's juicy. There it is. <laughs> uh, roll 1d6 for me there, uh, Joe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Six. You regain two sanity from 
making these connections. Normally it's 1d6 minus uh, three, but because like you had this unnatural insight into what was going on with Emily, uh, I made it 1d6 minus four. Sweet. So you regain two sanity. Okay, yeah. Holy she fucking shit. Finds that out and then she destroys every note she took. She gets rid of all evidence. And she calls it a fucking day. Victor, sir, how are you doing? Uh, so I think when Victor goes, uh, he continues to work with the Armenian. He, um, tries to make contact with Mama, but after he got arrested in Meadowbrook, New Jersey, and couldn't explain at all why or how or what he was doing, um, she continues her boycott of him. And so I think what Victor is going to do in his down in downtime is to attempt to fulfill a responsibility by making contact with his half brother Alexander. Okay, great. Yeah, um, sounds good. So he, yeah, so Victor would know, you know, what school uh, Alexander goes to, and so he would observe for a couple of days. You know, when they let out and the school bus and all that, how that works. And uh, one day he would attempt to approach Alexander, uh, Sasha, as he's uh, going to the school bus uh, on his way home. Okay, go ahead and roll your Sandy test. All right. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rolling like shit. A 95 out of 51. I, I mean, I would say probably um, Victor would approach uh, the uh, the bus and uh, start calling out, Sasha, Sa- Sasha, Sasha, c- come over here, boy. And probably the principal of the school walks up. Uh, excuse me, can I help you? I am, t- look, Sasha, the, the boy over here... I, Alexander uh, Mikhailov he is no not Mikhailov that no that is that my no I'm so, I'm sorry sir I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave before I call the police N- No he is bro- he is brother he's my half half brother Well you'll understand then if we contact his mother and verify that No 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 I Okay, I go now. Sasha, goodbye. I see you again. Oof, man, that's rough. That's breaking my heart a little bit. We're all just fucking up. Oh, I'm sorry, Victor. And with that, you all try to return to some, as, as much of a normal routine as you possibly can, given everything that you just endured. But every time the phone rings, every time you check your email, every time you go to the office, your palms sweat, your stomach somersaults, your head hurts, your ears ring as you just wait for that that call, that dispatch that you know is coming. And it will. At one point or another, you know it will. And that's where we'll end tonight's session. Thank you for listening to the Black Project Gaming Podcast. This has been Music from a Darkened Room, written by Dennis Detwiller for the Delta Green RPG. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash blackprojectgaming. We'd also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Join us again for our next session as we begin our playthrough of Extreme Ophelia, written by Shane Ivey. Until then, I'm Vince, your host and handler, with Brett as OSI Special Agent Lukash Honey, Cami is Dr. Josephine McCarthy, Doug is Victor Mikhailov, Jack is Dr. Emily Mraz, and Sonia is Deputy U.S. Marshal Sarah Shakavorty. Thank you, and good night.